Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Jane Austen July video. And today I'm going to be doing a book to screen adaptation and talking about the 2008 adaptation of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Today, as you're watching this, is the last day of Jane Austen July. I didn't think I was going to put up a video today, but I had planned out and pre-filmed all of my Jane Austen July videos, um, apart from the Jane Austen July tag, which I did last week. But then I finished watching the 2008 Sense and Sensibility, which is my favourite adaptation of an Austen book. And I thought that I just wanted to talk about it more than I could do justice to in the Jane Austen July vlog that will be out tomorrow. So I thought I would make a separate video discussing this amazing screen adaptation and discussing Sense and Sensibility. There will be spoilers for Sense and Sensibility in this video because I want to talk about what this adaptation does in full and I can't really do that without spoiling Sense and Sensibility so if you haven't read Sense and Sensibility or seen an adaptation of it I would advise not watching this video. Sense and Sensibility was Jane Austen's first published novel and also one of the first that she wrote. Um, I don't think we're completely certain whether Northanger Abbey or Sense and Sensibility was finished first in her sort of original first draft but, but certainly it was a book that she worked on in her sort of late teens early 20s and then revised later on. Now Sense and Sensibility is not my favourite Jane Austen novel I usually say it's my least favourite, but having reread it for the third time this Jane Austen July, and having also reread Northanger Abbey for the third time, and Northanger Abbey being the book I usually say is my second least favourite, I think Sense and Sensibility has overtaken Northanger Abbey. Whether it would also overtake Emma, which is the next one up, I don't know. I haven't reread Emma for a while. Hopefully I'll reread that next Jane Austen July. Um, but my love of Sense and Sensibility increased quite a bit on this reread and made me think about it in new ways. Um, Whereas my love for Northanger Abbey didn't really increase and I still kind of felt the same about it as I had before. So yeah, Sense and Sensibility follows the story of two sisters, Eleanor and Mary Ann. They live with their mother and their younger sister, Margaret. And at the beginning of the novel, their father dies and his estate goes to their elder stepbrother and they get no money at all, which means the three sisters and their mother are forced to leave Norwood Park, this beautiful estate that they've grown up on and they love, and move elsewhere. And we follow the relationship between these two sisters and also their like various romantic entanglements. One of the issues I have with Sense Sensibility's book, one of the reasons why I have struggled with it in the past, is I find the pacing weird, and I find the way the pacing works means that it doesn't give the time that I would like to certain character relationships. For example, the relationship between Eleanor and Edward. Like, the beginning of the book, you just barely see them, and you barely get to know Edward at all. And you do get to know him a bit later, more than I think I had appreciated until my reread this time. But I feel like Edward has a large presence in the book as like a plot point, but you don't actually see very much of him, and you don't actually very see very much of Eleanor and Edward's relationship. And that's one of the issues I've always had with Sense and Sensibility. That and the fact that you also don't get to see much of Marianne and Colonel Brandon, and I don't feel completely happy with their ending because I feel like you don't get to see them get to know each other well enough. I also struggle with the fact that in Sense Sensibility the younger sister Margaret is there but she's not really there and she barely says anything and I don't really know what she's doing there. So those are the issues I've always had with Sense Sensibility which have meant in the past that it's been my least favourite Jane Austen and even like rereading it this time when I, I really enjoyed it a lot more I also I still found the pacing really weird and I was like really this has already happened and we're a quarter of the way through? Like I like Sense and Sensibility a lot but I have always thought to myself, and Sense Sensibility is one of Jane Austen's best stories, but it's one of her least well told stories, and the, the story itself is much better than the execution. Like I said, this reread, I got a lot more respect for Sense Sensibility, and if you think of it as less of a love story, and not about the love so much, and more about the relationship between the two sisters, then I think I can get past the fact that Eleanor and Edwards and Colonel Brandon and Marianne's relationships aren't as developed as much. And also, I noticed this time something I enjoy, which is that Eleanor and Colonel Brandon's relationship and like friendship and Edward's and Marianne's friendship are quite well developed and I quite liked that in a way it's a book all about like sibling relationships and surrogate sibling relationships. Colonel Brandon because wants to be her brother, in fact wants to be her brother-in-law and the way Marianne talks to Edward expecting him to be her brother-in-law is also very like sibling-like. Another thing that occurred to me as I read Sense Sensibility um, this Jane Austen July was that the relationship between Eleanor and Colonel Brandon is so interesting that halfway through I was like, why on earth doesn't Eleanor just end up with Colonel Brandon? Like, forget Edward, he's far too complicated, and Colonel Brandon's really nice, and Marianne doesn't seem to like him, so why don't Eleanor and Colonel Brandon end up together? And the reason why they don't is because they don't love each other. Um, and one of the things I quite like about Jane Austen is sometimes the convenient things don't happen, and the things that could be quite romantic don't happen, because actually, if a different version of Sense and 
responsibility where Eleanor and Colonel Brandon fell in love. That fixes all the problems um, in a way. I mean, it doesn't necessarily fix Marianne's problems, but like it fixes Eleanor's problems and Colonel Brandon's problems. And they are sort of almost seen more suited in temperament because they are both a bit more practical. But actually, like the point of sense of sensibility is that that doesn't happen because they don't love each other and people just love who they love, which is one thing I kind of noticed in E.M. Forster before as well. And it's something I really like in his work, that characters often just love inconvenient people because actual real human emotions don't follow what's just useful for a story. And that's something I thought about a lot more reading Sense Sensibility this time and really enjoyed. And that made me like it a lot more. I've gone on a big Sense Sensibility tangent and I haven't actually spoken about this adaptation yet, but I wanted to explain my sort of reading history with Sense Sensibility, the things I like about it and the things I have struggled with about it before I explain this, because this is my favourite television adaptation of any Jane Austen book. And I think it is one of the best TV adaptations of any books ever. Despite the fact that Sense Sensibility isn't my most favourite Jane Austen, this is my favourite Jane Austen adaptation. And I think it's partly because Sense and Sensibility, the book, is not my favourite. And because, like I said, I love the story, but I don't think Jane Austen's execution is at its best in the way it is in Pride and Prejudice or Mansfield Park or Persuasion. But this adaptation is absolutely amazing. There are many things I love about this adaptation. It is beautifully shot, the music is incredible, the kind of like montage sequences, some of them are absolutely fantastic. There's like a brilliant moment near the end where on the wall of Barton Cottage um, they have a painting by Eleanor of Norlin and Eleanor removes it off the wall and puts up instead a painting she's done of Barton Cottage. And the symbolism of that moment, which is, you know, like a 10 second clip, is just so emotional and powerful like there's so many like little things like that which are really really well done in this which I love and um, so many small details and clever things which are just fantastic the acting in this is also amazing Hattie Morahan and Charity Wakefield as Eleanor and Marianne are fantastic Dan Stevens is Edward and he is very good as well um, Dominic Cooper is Willoughby who's fantastic and David Morrissey who plays Colonel Brandon is one of my favourite actors of all time he plays Bradley Headstone in the 1996 adaptation of Our Mutual Friend and ever since seeing that I have just thought he's one of the most amazing actors ever like the cast in this is amazing and so well done um, Claire Skinner as well who plays Fanny Dashwood is absolutely hilarious the characterisation in this is fantastic the humour is on point the emotional moments are so powerful like, like I wept my way through that third final episode like there's so many moments that made me just weep like and the dynamic between the two sisters and the way they portray that is done so well and is so fantastic it's so dramatic and powerful and wonderful and so enjoyable but the thing that I love about this adaptation more than anything is that the plotting and the characterization is perfect and I think that in this adaptation any problems of pacing that may be present in the book Sense of Sensibility are fixed I think the relationship between Eleanor and Edward is done so well in this and the interpretation of it in this adaptation makes me interpret it in the book really well. Like I think the interpretation of the relationship between Eleanor and Edward in this is perfect to the book and is correct from the book and but is done more with and we see a lot more of their relationship, we see much more of Edward and therefore we get such a stronger sense of their relationship and we are rooting for that relationship so much more and it's just done so well. I also think Margaret is really really well done in here, they build on her character a lot, they make her much more interesting and they also just make her very very present as well and you get a sense of the fondness of both sisters for their younger sister as well. And then also the relationship between Colonel Brand and Marianne I really really like in this and I don't think it is entirely true to the book I think they give it a little bit more romance than it has in the book but I love it for that because I believe watching this adaptation that they will be happy together and reading Sense of Sensibility I don't know if I believe that but I believe it when I watch this and I love it for that because it is fantastically done and it is so beautifully explored. I also think as well Dominic Cooper is a really really good Willoughby and the Willoughby plotline is done so well. The thing that I think is the best thing in the whole of Sense of Sensibility as a book is the Willoughby plotline and Willoughby as a character I think is magnificent. The chapter in this, I think it's chapter 44 um, maybe, where Willoughby comes and kind of like explains himself to Eleanor. That is one of my favourite chapters in any Jane Austen book. It is brilliantly, brilliantly written and in this it's like perfectly portrayed as well. Like one of those amazing moments is just done so well. I have also seen the film from the 90s, um, which I don't mind, but I don't love for several reasons. But one of the main reasons that I really took against it is that it cuts that scene out. And for me, like that scene where Willoughby ex like explains himself to Eleanor is like one of the most important scenes in the book. And they cut it and I'm like, but that completely changes everything about the book and all of the character relationship and it completely changes the portrayal of Willoughby. But yeah, that's one thing that annoys me about the old adaptation. Um, 
other than that, the main reason why I don't like it is it's just not as good as this, and this is amazing, and I love this so much. So yes, I would heartily, heartily recommend watching this adaptation of Sense Sensibility. Like I said, it's fantastic. I think it builds on some of the plot lines that I find in the book a little bit underdeveloped, and just like does so much with them. And along with that, it is beautifully shot, beautifully acted. The characterization is done so well. Like I agree with all of the interpretations in this book. I also think it gets really well, like the situation at Barton Cottage and the lack of money that the Dashwoods have and the issues surrounding that. I think that's done really well as well. Like there's just so many things in this that are done fantastically and it's so emotional and beautiful. And yes, I would highly, highly recommend this adaptation. So that is it for this book to screen review. I hope you've all enjoyed Jane Austen July. I can't believe it is over today. I have been vlogging the last like 10 days of Jane Austen July. So there should be a vlog up tomorrow for you. And yeah, that will be the end of Jane Austen July. I hope you have all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know down in the comments if you have seen this adaptation of Sense Sensibility and what you thought of it and also what your favourite adaptation of a Jane Austen novel is and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.